to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about two products that are on the market that I think play a significant role in bedbug control plans. And one of those products I have right here in front of me, and it's Hot Shot No Pest Strips. The other product, which I unfortunately don't have in front of me, is Nuvan Pro Strips. Now, these two products utilize the same active ingredient and actually the same percentages, which makes them extremely similar products. The only difference between those two products that I just mentioned is the label. And we'll get back to the label after I explain how these products are really intended to be used. Now, the first thing I want to say about either of those two products is that whenever you're using them, you want to make sure you follow the label directions that are on the actual product packaging. Now, it's very, very important because a lot of people get these and say, you know what, uh, I know it may not be intended to be used this way, but that's where my bed bugs are, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that, and they do it. Now, that's a personal decision, but it may not be the one that's in your best interest. So, these directions are here for your protection and your safety, and you really need to read those directions before you use the product. Now, how I see these fitting into a bed bug control plan are that they are pesticide treated strips and they come in these little air freshener looking containers if you want to call it that. It's a little plastic container that has these slots in it and how they're intended to be used is that say and a great example is a garbage can and say you have flies in your garbage can and you take one of these out of the package you put it in that garbage can and you seal that garbage can and then what they do is that the active ingredient in here volatilizes and it actually treats the air inside that garbage can. And so that's kind of how they're intended to be used. Now how it fits into a bed bug plan is say that you have a suitcase that you just took with you, you think might have been exposed to bed bugs, you take all the belongings out and you do what you need to do with them, whether it's you know washing and drying them on a hot dry cycle, whatever the case may be, and now you have this suitcase and you don't know what to do with it because you can't treat it with pesticides and you know if you can't treat it with pesticides and you can't put it in a washer and dryer, what are you going to do with it? You could put it in a sealed garbage bag, so you put, put it in the garbage bag, put one of these strips in, and then seal that garbage bag, and then you set it aside for several weeks or more. And now this active ingredient is volatilizing within that bag and treating anything that might hopefully be either on or in that empty suitcase. And that's kind of how these fit into a bed bug control plan. Now, the question of what do you do with those items you can't treat and launder is a huge question when it comes to bed bugs. And this is one product that I think fits in right there. The difference between Hot Shot No Pest Strips and New Van Pro Strips is that Hot Shot does not have bed bugs on the label. New Van Pro Strips does. And in some states, and you need to check your state regulations, you have to have the pest listed on the label in order to use that pesticide for that reason. So in New York, for instance, if you have a suitcase in New York and this product says you can treat suitcases, but bed bugs isn't listed on the label as a target pest, you are not supposed to use this to treat bed bugs on a suitcase because bed bugs isn't listed on the label. A lot of states will allow you to do that as long as you're using it consistently with the label. So if the label says you can treat luggage, it really doesn't matter in a lot of states what bug is on that luggage as long as you're using it as it's supposed to be used. In a couple states, such when New York is one of them, it has to be actually listed on the label. So Nuvan is available for use for bed bugs in New York, for instance. So that's the big difference between the two products. Outside of that, they have the same active ingredients and the same you know, percentages. The active ingredient in these, just for your own information, is a product called Dichlorvos, also known as DDVP. And uh, it's an interesting active ingredient because it actually falls into a class of pesticides called organophosphates. And it's actually, I think, one of few, if I don't even know if there are any other ones, organophosphates that are still on the market. So it gives us a different class of pesticides to use against bed bugs, which is one reason why a lot of people look at it and say, you know what, this could be a good product for bed bug control. All right, so we talked about the products themselves. We talked about how they're intended to be used. And there's a couple last things that I want to mention. One of the most, actually, there's two questions that I want to cover that I get all the time on these products. The first of which is, can I treat whatever the belonging might be with these strips? An uh, example is this picture frame right here. Say, you know, somebody has this and say, can I treat this? 
Can I treat these pens over here? Can I treat that pile of papers? The bottom line is those are questions that are better suited for the manufacturer. I don't know the answers to those questions. There's a million things that you could possibly treat with these, and the manufacturer would hopefully be able to give you some insight in regards to if you can or can't treat those items. And so if you have any questions about what can you treat with these strips, those really need to be directed to the manufacturer, and their contact information is usually on the back of the label. So please reach out to them with those types of questions. The other most popular question I get about these products are, how long do I need to leave whatever I'm treating with this strip? So I put the suitcase in the bag, I drop one of these strips in, I seal it up, I set it aside. How long does it need to stay in there? And it's really going to depend on what you're treating. The bottom line is, is that recent research is showing us that you really need to leave things for at least two weeks if possible, and sometimes even more. A recent study was printed in one of our trade journals, Pest Management Professional. Uh, University of Kentucky researchers did a project on that exact question. And I want to read to you exactly what they found because I think it's very important. And right here it says, eliminating bed bugs inside shoes, books, and computer keyboards was more difficult and some survived even 14 days after continuous exposure. And so even after those two weeks, they still had bugs and eggs that were still viable inside certain belongings. And the take home with that is that there 